Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to dissect the new update for Universe Sandbox Square known as Alpha 19. We're going to talk about the new additions, what has changed, what has been added and why this is probably one of the more important updates so far. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So first and foremost, as you can hear, the music is actually different. This is actually one of the new additions. The music has been improved or I guess changed and uh, there's quite a lot of new compositions that you can go through by going into audio and essentially just going through um, all of them individually. This is the old music. Um, this is also old. Track three. This is also old. And Glory, I believe, is something that has been added uh, very recently. This is a, by a composer by the name of... Macuber, who created uh, new compositions for the game, making it uh, a little bit more interesting. This game used to have no music whatsoever. I actually uh, used to add my own music, something like a year and a half ago. But then uh, he started to produce really interesting tunes for this particular game. So that's addition number one. Possibly not the most important one, but definitely gives it a little bit more flavor. Addition number two is very, very important. Now, this update is called Disintegration, and that's because a lot of things have been changed. A lot of things have been uh, changed in the way that they now explode and destroy and disintegrate a lot more interestingly. For example, the explosions work a lot better. Check this out. Boom. Okay, that was a little bit too fast. Let's do this again. I just destroyed Earth. Let's, go, let's do the same to Mars, actually. Let's go to Mars. We're going to slow down time a little bit more and watch how beautiful the explosions have become. They used to be very, very simple, but now there is quite a lot of really, really cool stuff. You see the shockwave and all of the fragments flying away? It is absolutely awesome. Let me show it to you even slower this time. We're going to go for Venus. So here we go. Venus, boom. Here's the shockwave and the explosions. Absolutely gorgeous. So there's a lot of new particle effects, a lot of really new, uh, new uh, pretty awesome effects that have been added when it comes to explosions. There's also um, a completely reworked model of tidal forces, and we're going to explore this a little bit differently. We're going to create a new object here. So let's just say maybe Earth. And we're going to put um, Mars in a close orbit around Earth. And there's going to be a lot of tidal forces that will actually start warming them up. So you can see Earth has already warmed up to about 200 degrees Celsius. This is because there's something called tidal forces acting on it. It's basically the friction created by the mass that is so close to Earth that makes it uh, basically uh, rub on the inside, creating a lot of friction. So in other words, the pull from Mars is um, so strong that it sort of causes the inside of Earth to... Uh, cause a lot of friction, which then comes out as the um, as heat and temperature that then basically makes water vaporize on the surface. Now, this is Earth and Mars. And let's do something a little bit more extreme. Let's place Earth and let's also place Venus at a slightly farther away orbit and watch the temperature of Earth increase um, as they basically start creating a lot of um, tidal effects around one another. So. They're going to start orbiting and create some really interesting effects here. Maybe not as fast as with Mars, but as you can see, as, uh, um, as Venus approaches Earth closer and closer, the temperature actually increases to the point of, uh, well, I think the water is going to start um, evaporating soon. And there you go, water is gone. Is it going to get warmer than this? And looks like the answer is no. So it looks like tidal effects are not particularly well implemented just yet because I think this is actually a bug. Uh, it, it is definitely supposed to increase, but it's not increasing for Earth for some reason. It, it is increasing for Venus, though. As you can see, Venus is completely molten. So the tidal effects on Venus are working fine, but the tidal effects on Earth seem to be a little bit bugged. But you know what? It, it does work uh, in most cases, so do check it out and play around with it. But there's actually something else that has been added and or actually improved uh, in relation to the tidal effects. It's the so-called Roche limit about which we'll be talking about very, very, very soon. It's the idea of having this sort of um, imaginary boundary around the planet or any object where um, the gravity pull is so strong that it actually disintegrates any body. So, for example, let's take Mars and put it around Jupiter right here. And guess what's going to happen to it? That's right. It's possibly going to disintegrate. Or so I hope. Look at that, it's doing something. It's doing something. It's smoking. It's falling apart. 
it's slowly falling apart and that's basically disintegration it's creating the rings around jupiter now this is kind of how we think rings around saturn may have been formed this is a new theory that i explored in one of the previous videos but you can see that basically mars is slowly falling apart because of the uh roche limit because of this pull on um on its own body from the extremely strong gravity pull of Saturn. Or is this Jupiter? Jupiter, sorry, my bad. Anyway, so that's the Roche limit. We'll talk about this in one of the future videos. But when it comes to planets and other objects, there actually has been a pretty interesting addition um, in relation to the actual temperature. So now, at some point, when the temperature is really, 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 really high, the planets start evaporating and at some point even disappear. I'm gonna show it to you by basically making uh, manual adjustments here to the surface of Jupiter and as soon as it reaches a certain threshold it's gonna start evaporating there you go and then it will actually disappear if it's really really hot it's going to completely disappear let's just see if we can actually make it make it do that make it so so hot that it's going to basically just evaporate into outer space and you can see these are actual particles that you can kind of click on and explore and even create objects out of them but uh, there's our Jupiter, it's going to slowly, slowly disappear and you can kind of see the mass here is actually decreasing very linearly and if I actually increase the temperature even further, it's going to increase even more, or uh, that decrease that is. So this is a pretty cool effect, it's actually kind of fun to explore this and to possibly even see what happens when uh, certain bodies get extremely hot, so you can see there's a lot of really cool things happening right now. As a matter of fact, it looks like because of all this evaporation of the mass, we're acquiring some really interesting object in orbit around Jupiter. And they can't decide if they want to be moons or just huge rocks of stuff. And so this is a pretty cool phenomenon and it makes me wonder if any of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn were actually made this way, because maybe that's how they acquired their mass early on in the creation of the solar system. So we'll, we'll explore this a little bit more uh, later on as well. Oh, and by the way, all of these effects have actually been uh, dramatically optimized, so now all of this runs so well. Like, I'm, I'm currently getting 60 frames per second, where it used to be that I would actually start stuttering here. So a lot of performance improvements, a lot of uh, modifications to the game that have made it a lot more manageable on even older computers. Now, one more thing in relation to planets and evaporation is that if I actually initiate a supernova right next to whatever, this area, the supernova will very, very likely um, evaporate everything here. So let's just make this go supernova just so you can see that a lot of this stuff will very likely evaporate due to the supernova effects. So I'm actually going to erase this uh, star because otherwise uh, all of these planets will be swallowed by, um, by it. And so now just watch how the supernova will actually heat up this Jupiter and it will very likely completely disintegrate as well. Or at least that's, uh, that's what I hope it will do. So the temperature here, hmm, it's not really increasing that fast yet. Maybe if I accelerate time a little bit. Okay, that didn't work as I planned, so let's try this again, because I know it works for sure. I've tried it before in, a, in an actual solar system. Let's try it again with our own sun. Let's actually just make this go supernova and see what happens here. Boom. All right, and there you go. Earth and Mercury and everything else is gone. Evaporated completely. Really, really fast, as a matter of fact. And these guys, they're evaporating as well. Um, they lost quite a lot of mass. Here, let me, let me do this again a little bit slower. So here is the supernova and watch the earth as it evaporates because of it and boom and it's gone super super fast And it turned into sort of plasma ball actually. So it's pretty cool All right, and it looks like everything here has been destroyed and this kind of takes me to my next point So you can now also record all of these beautiful things on the fly by pressing F9 it actually records um, An animated gif if you just press F9 and a lot of them have actually been displayed on universe sandbox square um Steam page, you can actually check them out. They all look really, really pretty. So if I wanted to record this, all I had to do right now is press F9. Also, the fact that there's so many new simulations here uh, has been made a little bit easier by including this tag called new. So I haven't really done this yet. I'm gonna click on it and see what's up. And this is some sort of a slow simulation of uh, Minmus colliding with Moon in a very, very beautiful fashion. Absolutely gorgeous. 
And now that I've clicked on it, it's no longer new. So it's, it's been checked, I've already played this at least once. Uh, so there's actually quite a lot of new simulations that have been added. Uh, you can kind of see that I haven't really played through many of them. A lot of new explosions, a lot of uh, some new planets, some new exoplanets, and uh, uh, quite a lot of new historical stuff that we'll talk about in one of the future videos as well. But as you can see, the actual explosions look dramatically much more improved and much more realistic and definitely a lot more beautiful. And I think one of the last things I was going to mention is that there's also no, quite um, a lot of new objects that have been added. Specifically here we're talking about human objects and of course planets and stars as well. But uh, there's some new things that have been added. Like for example, I think this marble is new. Uh, so is this great pyramid of uh, Giza from Egypt. And uh, so is the Juno mission here. So let's actually just go ahead and place the great pyramid of Giza in orbit around the moon. Because why not? We can. And here it is, super, super tiny in comparison to the size of the actual moon. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. I think there's uh, quite a lot of really cool additions here. Definitely uh, new objects as well. So for example, under um, minor objects here, there's at least three new asteroids um, and comets. Under planets, we now have Planet 9 as one of the additions. And of course, beautiful Proxima B as well, the, uh, the nearest Earth-like planet that we've discovered very recently. And also some of the newer, uh, newly discovered stars, like for example, Wolf 1061. So there's quite a lot of really cool additions. Uh, some of them, of course, quite minor, but some of them are definitely really dramatic, specifically when it comes to the actual uh, visual effects and the actual things like explosions, which are definitely one of my favorite new additions, because now, look at this beauty. This is what an exploding moon looks like. And so this is essentially Alpha 19 in a nutshell. I'm definitely really impressed with all of the additions and I'm really, really happy that the uh, developers of this game basically didn't abandon it. It's not abandoned where it, they're definitely still working on it. They're definitely still putting a lot of um, effort and a lot of improvements into it. And it definitely is a game that is worth buying if you still haven't bought it. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I know that I haven't mentioned all of the improvements. There's actually quite a long list of bug fixes and additional minor improvements. But these are basically the most essential ones that I wanted to mention in this video and are definitely the most essential for me uh, personally as well. And anyway, so thank you for watching. We're going to continue exploring Universe Starbucks Square in various videos where we'll talk about space and space sciences. And if you still haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with someone who likes these types of videos and possibly consider supporting us on Patreon as well. And in the meanwhile, let's actually go in here and look at this new simulation known as um, Earth and Many Moons. I think we actually had something similar before, but this time, look at how beautiful everything is going to become. We might even acquire rings around um, our Earth, and there's going to be a lot more beautiful explosions. And anyway, I'll see you guys later, game you later, and as always, bye-bye. And I cannot believe that I'm getting 60 frames per second in this simulation. This has never happened before. This was one of the slowest simulations ever, and now it's it runs brilliantly look at that all of the smoke all of these rings everywhere this looks amazing very well done guys very well done